Welcome back as we look at another of the great chapters of the Bible. Our chapter today comes from the Old Testament book of 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 12. Israel is divided. Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel had come to Shechem to make him king. As soon as Jeroboam the son of Nebat heard of it, for he was still in Egypt where he had fled from King Solomon, then Jeroboam returned from Egypt. And they sent and called him. And Jeroboam and all the assembly of Israel came and said to Rehoboam, Your father made our yoke heavy. Now therefore lighten the hard service of your father and his heavy yoke on us, and we will serve you. He said to them, Go away for three days, then come again to me. So the people went away. Then King Rehoboam took counsel with the old men who had stood before Solomon his father while he was yet alive, saying, How do you advise me to answer this people? And they said to him, If you will be a servant to this people today, and serve them, and speak good words to them, when you answer them, then they will be your servants forever. But he abandoned the counsel that the old men gave him, and took counsel with the young men who had grown up with him, and stood before him. And he said to them, What do you advise that we answer this people, who have said to me, Lighten the yoke that your father put on us? And the young men who had grown up with him said to him, Thus shall you speak to this people, who said to you, Your father made our yoke heavy, but you lighten it for us. Thus shall you say to them, My little finger is thicker than my father's thighs. And now, whereas my father laid on you a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father disciplined you with whips, but I will discipline you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day, as the king said, Come to me again the third day. And the king answered the people harshly, and forsaking the counsel that the old men had given him, he spoke to them according to the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to your yoke. My father disciplined you with whips, but I will discipline you with scorpions. So the king did not listen to the people, for it was a turn of affairs brought about by the Lord, that he might fulfill his word, which the Lord spoke by Ahijah the Shilonite, to Jeroboam the son of Nebat. And when all Israel saw that the king did not listen to them, the people answered the king, What portion do we have in David? We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel! Look now to your own house, David. So Israel went to their tents. But Rehoboam reigned over the people of Israel, who lived in the cities of Judah. Then King Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was taskmaster over the forced labor. And all Israel stoned him to death with stones. And King Rehoboam hurried to mount his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel has been in rebellion against the house of David to this day. And when all Israel heard that Jeroboam had returned, they sent and called him to the assembly and made him king over all Israel. There was none that followed the house of David but the tribe of Judah only. When Rehoboam came to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin, 180,000 chosen warriors to fight against the house of Israel to restore the kingdom of Rehoboam to the son of Solomon. But the word of God came to Shemaiah, the man of God, Say to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all the house of Judah and Benjamin, and to the rest of the people, Thus says the Lord, You shall not go up or fight against your relatives, the people of Israel. Every man returned to his home, for this thing is from me. So they listened to the word of the Lord, and went home again, according to the word of God. Then Jeroboam built Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim, and lived there. And he went out from there and built Penuel. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now the kingdom will turn back to the house of David. If this people go up to offer sacrifices in the temple of the Lord at Jerusalem, then the heart of this people will turn again to their Lord, to Rehoboam king of Judah, and they will kill me and return to Jeroboam king of Judah. So the king took counsel and made two calves of gold. And he said to the people, You have gone up to Jerusalem long enough. Behold your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And he set one in Bethel, and the other he put in Dan. Then this thing became a sin, for the people went as far as Dan to be before one. He also made temples on high places, and appointed priests from among all the people who were not of the Levites. And Jeroboam appointed a feast on the fifteenth day of the eighth month, like the feast that was in Judah. 
and he offered sacrifices on the altar. So he did in Bethel, sacrificing to the calves that he made. And he placed in Bethel the priests of the high places that he had made. He went up to the altar that he had made in Bethel on the fifteenth day in the eighth month, in the month that he had devised from his own heart. And he instituted a feast for the people of Israel and went up to the altar to make offerings. Occasionally, I see a t-shirt or a bumper sticker or hear someone say, I have no regrets. In effect, if I had to live my life over, I wouldn't change a thing. Not me. I've done some pretty stupid, and I mean boneheaded, absolutely dumb, airheaded. Well, you get the idea. <laughs> Just give it some thought. What you are saying is that given the option, you would actually say the same unkind words, do the same thoughtless actions, and show the same disregard for people's feelings. Really? It may be at the heart of those thoughts is the concept that we are what we are collectively because of the decisions we have made. Perhaps it's the fear that we might not have the same job or experiences or friends may have some bearing on it. Yet to think that life would not be better if we had made better choices, well, that isn't based in fact. It's almost like the game show hosts who ask if we would keep what we have or trade it in for what's behind door number two. Wait, we might trade in a tent for a chance at winning a house, right? No regrets. That's the foolhardy philosophy of the young. But it certainly isn't the wisdom that comes with age. I read this chapter in 1 Kings and think, what if? What if Rehoboam had listened to the counsel of the old men who had served his father Solomon? What if he had considered how bad the advice his friends who he had grown up with? What if? Don't you just wish he had made a better choice? Well, as they say, if wishes were horses, beggars would ride. For a moment, let's see where the seeds of this incident were sown. Verse 15, So the king did not listen to the people, for it was a turn of affairs brought about by the Lord, that he might fulfill his word, which the Lord spoke by Ahijah the Shilonite to Jeroboam the son of Nebat. We go back one chapter and see the context in verse, chapter 11, verses 30 through 33. Then Ahijah laid hold of the new garment that was on him and tore it into twelve pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, Take for yourself ten pieces, for thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Behold, I am about to tear the kingdom from the hand of Solomon and will give you ten tribes. But he shall have one tribe for the sake of my servant David and for the sake of Jerusalem the city that I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, because they have forsaken me and worshipped Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, Chemosh, the god of Moab, and Milcom, the god of the Ammonites. And they have not walked in my ways, doing what is right in my sight, and keeping my statutes and my rules, as David his father did. Ah, but there was one catch that brought this about. If you go back far enough, you'll see it. For God told Solomon in 1 Kings 3.14, and if you walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. Did you catch it? It's right there. It's the old if-then caveat. We actually just looked at this principle in our previous chapter in Galatians, in Galatians 6, 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. It's really the the same, even though it doesn't contain the actual words if and then. You can't sow bad seed and expect to harvest good crops. Solomon understood this. If you don't think he did, read his autobiography we call Ecclesiastes, and you'll see regret written in page after page. That's the nature of looking back. Still, one wonders if looking ahead could give us some perspective toward the future. Or is it all fait accompli, as the philosophy is now called? You know, the sense of which it's all an accomplished fact and nothing we can do will change it. Sounds a little bit like predestination, doesn't it? However, that's not what I read in the scriptures. I see verses like Romans 6.17, 
But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed. And in 1 Corinthians 6.11, And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Yes, we once were something, but the Word of God changed. It changed that when they, we, and I chose to listen to and heed the truth. Paul tells me by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit about that which comes from obedience. He wrote to the church at Corinth in 2 Corinthians 7.10, For godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret, whereas worldly grief produces death. Yes, no regrets there. One wonders if Rehoboam ever said, no regrets here, I wouldn't change a thing. Yeah, I don't know why people wouldn't want to have a harder life. Who wouldn't want whips and scorpions? We don't have the luxury of knowing his thoughts, but we do have the consequences. One wonders if that's enough for us to consider that our actions have consequences. What do you think? Any regrets? And Lord willing, let's meet here again tomorrow and look at another of the great chapters in the Bible.